Hi guys, um, so this is going to be a video about making a beaded face frame. So first step is going to be ripping down the timber. I thought it would be a good time to make a video because I actually had to remake a couple of face frames because there was a change in the ceiling height, finished ceiling height. So um, I was just making two frames up so I thought well I'm going to do all the processes in one here anyway. I might as well video it. So first thing I'm doing is just rough ripping down some timber. These are being made out of Akoya, which is like a, a modified timber product. Uh, it's, it's popular in the UK, I'm assuming it's made in other places, but um, just really good for not moving. So we've got argus and, you know, heat sources, good for not moving. Um, it does have a bit of internal tension in it though, so I'm just going to rip this down and then cross cut it to approximate length to take out some of the dog leg in it so that there's not so much wasted timber when you're planing. You know, if it's take away so much, just take the bow out. So that's what this is here, just giving them a quick cross cut. And then I'm going to face and edge all of these parts. You can see we're just doing the face side. Once we've got a nice flat face, just checking which way the bow is. We took four inch pass um, and then running that flat face against the fence uh, to get a nice square edge. And we're just checking as we go. Any, Some of them have got a real bow in them, so we're just doing part passes here and just taking off you know, bits where we need to. And then uh, get a pencil and give them a face and edge mark. So that's one of those. Um, sort of pica pencil type things really like them for face and edge marking so you can get really soft lead and you don't dent the timber and they give a really nice clear dark line so they're really good for that kind of that kind of marking just not very good for any fine joinery marking but just for reference marks they work fine um, so that's these bits all face and edge up and so we're going to switch this planer over into thickness in mode um, turn it into a thickness or a joint or into a thickness planer if you're American. There's a little whizzy handle thing I've made to put on the end of a old drill that I just leave next to it all the time. Makes quicker moving the bed up and down, otherwise you're down there spinning it like a lunatic for ages. Um, so we'll stick this through. You see I've got the air duster next to the planer because the Akoya, because of the modification process, it goes a bit static and it sticks to the bed a bit. So that just lets you blow off any chips that aren't getting picked up by the extractor because of the static. Um, and it means that they're not getting compressed into the fibres of the wood as it passes over because it is quite soft core. it's the only real downside with it is well apart from the price it's expensive but it's also quite soft so if you get chips wedged between the thickness of bed and the actual piece of wood when it comes through the other side they'll have made dents in the timber so that makes a lot more cleaning up and I'm making sure that for the final pass I'm leaving at least 0.8 of a millimetre to take off because the uh, in-feed rollers on this machine are serrated and if you're not taking off at least that amount with it being quite a soft timber you'll get left with sort of track lines where you can see where the thickness the thickness feed roller's gone over it and you get those little indents so make sure you're taking off at least three quarters of a millimetre stops that um, so that's these bits all thickness up next thing we have got to do is put the bead on it and uh, we're using a spindle moulder here and I'm just setting the power feed on this so that it's towing in slightly so it's pushing the ball tighter to the tighter to the actual fence all the time. These are actually being climb cut um, which you know it's, it's not safe for big uh, for big big cuts but for a small cut like a bead like this it's fine and it helps to prevent you getting any chip out because it is quite brittle and um, so having it on that climb cut means you're compressing the fibres in rather than lifting them out it stops a lot of the breakout around the arras of the bead. Um, so. You can just sort of see here when it comes through, like, and say, you wouldn't, you know, don't climb cut things unless you're using a power feed and taking a really small cut, really. It's not, not particularly advisable and safe. Um, so now everything's sort of moulded, you know, cross cut them to final length using the panel saw, and I'm just going to check the ends as I go here. And if I can see any, like, obvious splits or shakes, you know, sometimes there's some little internal shakes that you don't see until you're playing things out, try and take this as an opportunity to cut out any, any bits that aren't aren't too good so it gives you a bit of a chance to just check over and make sure that you've cut out any waste if you can obviously it's only it's at the very ends but most splits and shakes and stuff are going to be in the last few inches so it just uh, gives you a chance to sort of a bit of quality control I suppose really just check it over and now that all these are cut to length the next thing we've got to do is cut the notches and uh, this machine is a machine by a company called Hoffman uh, so or more so, I think the Hoffman kind of modified the original more so unit, but it's basically like a picture framer's guillotine, like you see at a framing shop. Um, but it's also got a flat nose on the front, a flat nosing knife, so that it creates a flat bottom notch instead of a V shape. 
And it's a really specific machine. I mean, it's just got one purpose, really, and they're relatively expensive. But for this kind of thing, they're by far the best the best tool for the job. And really nice, clean cuts. Yeah, it's nice that it doesn't make loads of noise. I used to always do them on my router table until I got this machine. Uh, but with that, you've got to do all your notches before you do your beading. You know, sometimes when you're mold, running the bead mould, you might find a little split or something in it and uh, having that sort of split there you've, you've already notched you've got to reset up to notch again whereas this way all your moulding's already done you know everything's good you can cut your lengths cut out any defects cut out any hidden shakes that might be in the timber and uh, you're just cutting your notches with what you know to be good stock so it saves you having multiple setups and um, normally the way you do these is you, you'd always run from one end so you'd slide the timber down and then machine the notch in the other end by sliding it down but they're actually longer than the uh, than the machine bed there so we've had to set them up from each end. Uh, this is the accompanying machine that goes with the notcher so this is uh, a Hoffman dovetail router and what it really does is it's just a vertical moving router with a dovetail bit in it essentially so it cuts the dovetail slightly pull the handle down that clamps the piece of wood in place and then the router comes up and that cuts a little dovetail and it's a bit like dovetail keys really you know you sometimes see people who make these river tables and stuff so use dovetail keys to hold splits together um, but this is just used to hold you know the actual frame together itself and, and one good thing about this is it it does leave a mechanical fixing that can't be seen from the edge so you know if you've got frames that end and they can be seen on the sides you're not you're not seeing that fixing let me just try and show you here what the little dovetail slots look like hopefully you can see what that looks like there um, so I've got those and then the company who makes the notching machine and the router they make the little key fixings that go with it so there's a box from there and all you do is glue up um, like we're doing here just got a little spatula kids glue spatula and then when you tap the keys in it pulls it tight now I will normally put a clamp on as well if it's a softish timber so like if I was using tulip wood or you know, poplar or a coir or something like this because the fibres compress a bit more easily, the dovetail keys don't put it quite as tight. So I'll use them for alignment and, you know, as like a permanent mechanical fixing. But I'll actually stick a, a little parallel clamp across these as well, just to get some clamping pressure. Um, you know, just giving that a wobble there, wondering whether or not it's going to snap if I try and move it with the weight of the clamps. But it seems to hold together. And just cleaning up the glue. Um, those little kids glue spatula things with a bit of rag wrap around them are perfect for getting in the bead. So they're good little, good little, uh, glue clean up tools and that is pretty much it that's a frame frame made just checking diagonals make sure it's square and uh that goes on the stack with all the others there's 40 frames on this job so that's it thanks for watching cheers